so um, we're gonna we're gonna transform our parent function of y equals absolute value of x into this larger, more complex function. And we're going to do it using, uh, oh, that's funny. Um, this is, I just put this up on Enmodo, so everybody has it. But these are the steps that we use, that I like to use, to transform a function. So this says here, y equals f of x. Now, in, in our instance right now, the way we're doing this, the f of x, the function of x that we're using, is we're using the absolute value function. But this is going to work whether our f of x might have been you know, x squared or x cubed or, or whatever. For any function, this is going to work in terms of transformation. So the graph of the parent function, and we want to turn it into the graph of a transformed function. So in, in our case, it's going to be y is equal to a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. So we're doing, and we're going to follow these steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our graph of the parent function. Where is it? Right here. Okay. We're going to start with our graph of the parent function. So in blue here, I'm going to put y is equal to the absolute value of x. That's what my parent function, I'm going to graph it. So since I'm very comfortable with parent functions, I can kind of graph this one. Um, and you will be able to graph this one over and over again pretty easily. So there's my parent function. Now I'm going to read the transformation from left to right. And the first thing I see is the negative sign. I won't always have a negative sign. But if I have a negative sign, it means I have to do something to it. So my next transformation is going to be y is equal to negative absolute value of x. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of building out this equation, starting from the parent function, step by step. So I know that if, if I have y equals negative absolute value of x, I need to flip my parent function over the x-axis. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Where I had um, where I had negative one one, I now have negative one negative one. Where I had where I had negative four four, now I have negative four negative four. Right. So my function is just going to flip over the x-axis. That's nice. So, so now I've graphed this part of it. Well, I'm, I'm reading from left to right. My next thing is I see I have an A of 2. So I'm going to graph y is equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of x. Well, I know that, that 2 is a number that's bigger than 1. So it means I'm going to be transforming. I'm going to be I'm going to be stretching my graph as opposed to compressing my graph. That just so happens that right now my graph is upside down. So if I'm stretching it, I'm kind of you can't see you won't see this on the video, right? I'm just talking. Right? It, I'm, I'm kind of stretching it. It's kind of like I'm kind of stretching it downwards because my graph is negative. But basically, what it's saying is that for every single y value that I have here on my red graph, I'm going to multiply it by 2 because that's what my a is. So where I had x equals 1, I had y equals negative 1. That negative 1 is now going to become negative 2. I'm multiplying it by 2, stretching it out by a factor of 2. Where I had 2, negative 2, that negative 2 is now going to become negative 4. And I'm stretching out my y value. I'm going to do that on the other side also. Negative 1, um, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 3 becomes negative 3, negative 6. I'm stretching out every y value by a factor of 2. 
right? So now my transformation looks like this. Am I making sense here? So far? Okay. So now I have the green graph, and now I want to change it to the final transformation. I have to take, it, take it, uh, into account my H and my K. So I want it to go Y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of X minus 1 plus 3. So my H is 1, positive 1. Remember, it's going to be the opposite sign. And my k is 3. So I'm going to take my green graph, and I'm going to move every single point on my green graph horizontally by 1 and vertically by 3. So I'll start with my vertex, which is always a nice place to start. I'm going to move my vertex horizontally 1, vertically 3. That's going to be my new vertex. I'll pick another point. So I have this point um, 1, negative 2. I'm going to move it horizontally 1, vertically 3. That's another point. I'll take a point from the other side. I had this point here, negative 4. Oh, no, it was a, a negative 2, negative 4. I'm going to move it horizontally 1. I'm going to move it vertically 3. There's another point. So I can now connect those points. And that's the transformation of my green graph. So I'm going to label a couple of these. This is the point 1, 3. This is the point 2, comma, 1. This is the point negative 1, comma, negative 1. And I've completed my transformation. I've taken, I've taken my parent function. I've flipped it over the x-axis. I've stretched it by a factor of 2. And I've moved it horizontally and vertically by my hk. And then I've labeled a couple of points. I've labeled three points, including my vertex, on the final transformation.